Oh, what a relief it is to see you all here and well! The next thing we knew, Akachi and Kobayashi had disappeared. Nothing turned up of our search in the museum, but I suppose it wouldn't if you were said to reappear with a cloud of dust. We were able to use that brick staircase to reach the surface. Upon emerging, we found ourselves in the real British Museum storage room. A great many mystified expressions were there to greet us, including Sergeant Ryan and Inspector Lestrade's. It's good to see you, Inspector. We do seem to run into another quite often, don't we? But how is the question? We only learned of the passages whereabouts today, but it's plain you knew the answer long before us. What? What's so plain about this? We were given reason to suspect there was a secret entrance in the British Museum being used for criminal activity. It was little more than a rumor, really. If I must be honest, I would have sworn up and down it wasn't true. My investigation wasn't what one would consider thorough, uh, but I did look, sir! Of course I did! Gah! This could have been the discovery of the century! Scotland Yard's crowning achievement! But here we are, beaten by the students of Harrington Academy again! If it makes you feel better, it was only me and Akachi who found it. I mean, you guys still are technically part of Harrington. <laughs> Behave. There's no need to kick a man once he's down. Oh... What an exhausting day this has been. I'd give anything to be home and in bed. Shan't be disappointed, Ryan. They're the detectives of the future. We want them to be a capable lot. The papers do love to report anything and everything as the work of the Yard. Let them have the front page this time. Not at all, sir. It was solely by chance we were able to assist you. When he's right, he's right. Without the police, what could we have done? We're just pleased we could save them before things got worse. Inspector, Sergeant, thank you for all that you do for us. Uh, what? I... Oh, oh. Aww. <laughs> it's nice. I'm glad Lestrade and Ryan got some love. They deserve it. Miss Whiteley, that's quite enough of your flattery. He'll... Ha ha ha! Yes! Well, you should know, young lady, that Scotland Yard is always on your side. Come to us if you need help. No need to hesitate. Inspector? See what you've done. A word of flattery goes straight to his head. This is precisely how he's passed all the father's achievements as his own. Doesn't matter who gets the credit. We're alive and well. That's all I care about. Couldn't agree more. We've been terribly worried about you, you know. I'll kindly ask you not pin this on me. Think of how worried we were for Miss Whiteley's recklessness. What's it bloomin' matter? It's proof you're good friends and you care. Eh? What happened to Lupin? I figured Lupin would just be like, uh, adios. Or not adios. Au revoir. <laughs> Au revoir, suckers. <laughs> I'm outta here. <laughs> Jack hung around. I appreciate you, Jack. Always loyal to the end. Gone, I guess. Seen a note over there from him. Jack picked up the letter and began to read. To me, beloved princess and her knights, I shall return to finish our duel another time. But till then, adieu. From Lupin with love. <laughs> Jack, Jack reading this is so good. <laughs> I told you he was going to be all adieu. <laughs> Jack is shook. What, what is this? Damn it. I, I never should have read it aloud. His face flushed red with regret. <laughs> oh no, even Watson can't help it. <laughs> it just isn't right to hear any of that from you. <laughs> they ain't my words. All I did was read the bloody thing. I sympathize. Of all the people to have been coerced into reading Lupin's pretentious writings. Pretentious? 
Oh, look, if it isn't Lupin. The other Lupin. D dear, oh dear, you're really here. Lupin, true to his knack for arriving long after the danger was ended, appeared from the storage room entrance, looking as though he might trip over himself at any moment. I'm glad he brought his change of clothes nearby. Lupin! Why in God's name are you here? I wanted to browse the museum today by chance when an officer said you were inside. Hmm. Indeed. That's quite convenient. Hmm. I wonder how long he had to compose himself after hearing Jack read his letter. You look terribly worn out. Did something happen? <laughs> you silly boy. There's dust all atop your nose. How did that get there? There is? Oh, th thank you very much. The boy's pretty pale cheeks turned a deep red, though not as red as Jack's, as I wiped the dust off his nose. See? He's pretty. Lupin's handsome. There's a connection there, I'm telling you. I really am so grateful we made it out of there alive. Yes, as am I. I swear, let this be a lesson to both of you not to try anything so foolish ever again. I'll find you're just as guilty. <laughs> I can't say I understand what sparked all this. But I'm glad to see you in good health all the same. What a night it had been. What a time. But all I could do was laugh. I had good company, and it was all I could manage to do when we were finally together. The immediate effects of the elixir had also begun to wear off of, off her homes, who was now able to stand without assistance. Hooray! Even the clarity in his eyes was returning. He acknowledged each of us with a new glitter of determination. I knew now that a sense of boredom lurked beneath Holmes's surface. A lust that was eerily similar to our enemies for something more. But I also knew the facts. Lust did not win, for he was here on the surface with us. Ah! I just remembered something! My mom? Kobayashi interrupted to present a certain something. Look at this beauty! Doesn't she look like Emily? She does. And didn't you wear the same dress at the party? Yes, I think it is. But I've never seen this portrait before. It was displayed in a beautiful frame. At the bottom right, I could see the painter's signature. The letters were difficult to read from age, but I knew the name. This... can't be. R.W. is... those are my father's initials. He was the one who did that painting of my family. Dang, he painted that portrait? How did he paint himself into the... That is talent. Oh. I mean... Dang, I'm impressed. The frame around the portrait looked so very similar. I had seen ones of a similar design displayed in Earl Beckford's room. His mansion was connected to the museum through the underground passage, much like mine was. That meant he could hide as many paintings as he pleased down there, coming and going with nary a suspicion aroused. Could the Earl have feared my father's paintings? A ludicrous thing when said in so plain a matter, and yet they may have left behind evidence. Were Earl Beckford to be overcome with paranoia for any medium which could incriminate him, then certainly it was plausible for him to fear them. Fearing that there might be something incriminating in one of these, Earl Beckford... Of course, he was a collector of my father's paintings. And with that came someone new who entered the room whilst clapping. New guy in the top hat? Nope, Pendleton. Dang, I keep waiting for that guy. He's so good looking. Not that you're not good looking, Pendleton, but I'm glad to see you. Brilliant, my lady. You have your parents' wit and are an exemplary head for your household. See here? You return to the countryside, Pendleton! How are you here? And what is this new music that's playing? A thousand pardons, but I lied. I've been running round and working to protect you. When that man tried to shoot Miss Whiteley in Earl Beckford's room. 
So it was you outside the window, wasn't it, sir? I knew it. This piano. Pendleton gave a composed nod. Yes, though it is deeply regretful that you were forced to be in harm's way to lure an enemy out of hiding. Pendleton, then you wanted me to notice the keys. You wanted me to learn about Father. I never knew he was part of any sort of intelligence agency. As each of us have, to some extent, become intimate with this matter, would you care to tell us more? Hmm. I suppose you were involved the moment you chose to risk your lives for Lady Whiteley. I agree. My lord has passed on. I don't see the harm in telling you. Before responding, he took a deep breath. It was hitched, labored, as though even this did not help him release the strenuous amount of tension that had been building. I would preface by saying that every word I speak is the absolute truth. But there are too many people here. I would have us go elsewhere. Will you swear to keep everything I say to yourselves and no other? We consented. Very well, then. I shall begin. Steadily, this was when the butler began to relay his tale. Oh, I'm so excited. Master Robert and Lady Olivia first met at Harrington Academy. They later married, and in time Lady Whiteley was born. Both of them believed very genuinely in helping London's poor. Together with several of their schoolmates, who found their ideas quite agreeable and in line with their own, they formed the Harrington Welfare and Education Foundation. This was intended to educate and improve the lives of those who were most in need. It was met with positive reception amongst the citizenry, and with this backing, grew larger by the year. Before we continue, I'm wondering if we're going to form, like, the new version of that foundation with everyone that we have, like, Emily, Holmes and Watson, Lupin, uh, Jack, Akachi, and, like, are we gonna... It'd be neat if that happened, and if we also got, like, a mirror photo, an updated photo of everybody posing in front of Harrington with Her Majesty now. It would be, like, a nice tie-in. I don't know if that's gonna happen, but that'd be kind of neat. He produced a photograph for our viewing. Yeah, this one. Let's see, like, if this was Emily, and... I don't know. Let's say Holmes... Watson. Because there's four guys, right? I mean, it doesn't matter what order they're in. This guy just always reminds me of Holmes for some reason because he's kind of sullen looking. <laughs> Could be Jack, too, obviously. Let's say Watson, Holmes, Jack, Lupin, Akachi, Emily, and her mat. Like, you know, if we got, like, a new picture of this, that'd be kind of neat. This photograph shows the Foundation's original members and was taken in celebration. Yet it was Master Robert who realized a portion of its funds were being diverted elsewhere. As a member of the Secret Intelligence Service, responsible for the pursuit of criminal organizations, he compiled a report of his findings and secured them in the mansion's basement. And it was Earl Beckford who was responsible for the missing money? Most likely, yes. Not long after his discovery, an assassin was sent to the mansion, and both Lady and Lord were murdered. Their murderer set fire to the mansion to disguise the scene as a mere accident. All of this is the work of Moriarty's organization, Spellbound. Had Earl Beckford walked into London's dark underbelly of his own accord? Or had he been enticed by Professor Moriarty? I did not know the answer, nor did it matter. He had used Her Majesty's ring to place a cloak over his own wrongdoings, adopted the strength of Spellbound to murder the people dearest to me. In many ways, the truth was as heavy a burden as the mystery. I used the passage Master Robert had prepared for such an emergency to flee with Lady Whiteley to the outskirts of London, and from there I gave her safe keeping in the countryside. That solves it. I couldn't understand why I'd felt as though I'd seen that passage before until now. Indeed, for it was not the first, but the second. If not for that passage, I doubt we would have been able to escape with our lives. The Earl, I should expect, 
Wanted every last speck of evidence against him destroyed along with the mansion. Spellbound was the most likely recipient of the missing funds stolen by the Earl. They would use that money to find their op fund their operations. The years passed, and each and every one of the founding members were, with generous space between the events, murdered, with their deaths perceived as accidents or suicides. All except Earl Beckford. When his time was meant to come, he pretended to be a victim to end Lady Whiteley's life as well. The reason he was an avid collector of Master Robert's painting was certainly, as she expressed, to be rid of potential evidence. The paranoia wrought by his foul deeds must have been great to fear even works of art. Corrupt he may have been by the end, but I cannot imagine even he knew what would become of the organization he helped found when they were students. I couldn't bear it. It was awful. All of it. The emotions afflicted me so greatly that I had to look away. What a night. Oh, what a night tonight had been. I've been ignorant my entire life. This painting father left to me held so much more value than I ever knew. Mother and father have been with me all this time. Within it, they watched over me, guided me to the truth. Her Majesty gave me this ring. Her Majesty brought me to Harrington. Without that, I would never have met any of you. They've been here. Always. Always they have been here. Another few days passed. I now stood next to the Thames at dusk, watching the ships idly sail along. So, like, are we gonna go arrest Earl Beckford, or what's going on with that? I learnt soon after that Earl Beckford's mansion had been caught in a blaze of unknown origin. Nothing remained by the end of it. Of course. Not even he. Or I suppose he may have remained in some form, for a body burnt to where it was unrecognizable had been discovered among the ashes. It was impossible to know if it was him for sure. I, at any rate, could believe it was someone else. For all he did, the Earl was never arrested and made to face his crimes. Neither the mystery of the giant factory nor the museum were solved. Oh, come on now! Scotland Yard had thoroughly investigated the passageway leading from the British Museum, but all this led to was a dead end. It was perfectly clean, not even a pebble to kick along the ground. I could only conclude it was Spellbound, who acted in haste to thwart exposure to the outside world. So much has happened since I was given this ring. Since I met Holmes, Watson, all of them. I played with the ring bequeathed to me by twisting it around my finger. This ring had been a symbol of trust between Queen and Bearer. How could it have been used for evil? How? The question pained me. I will continue to chase after Earl Beckford and Spellbound. But what should be done with the foundation my parents established? It was created with pure intentions, but its money has seeded the impure. Has the time come for it to be dissolved? Come on, give me this picture. You know you want to. The foundation was currently being supported by the kindness of countless people, but I could only imagine how my parents would grieve to know that its funds were being misappropriated. With shaking hands, I slid the ring from my finger and observed it closely. One man. It took one man to distort the will of my parents, murder them to cover up his crimes. And he wore a ring just like this. I was so elated the day Her Majesty gave this to me. But people can change. Earl Beckford used your faith in him to do evil. That I had worn a ring identical to the one who took away the lives of my loved ones. With such pride I wore this thing. This stupid, blasted piece of scrap. I flung my arm in the air with the ring grasped in my palm. Oh, come on, you can't look at it like that. Your parents wore their rings with pride. Everyone else in that photo also had rings and were good to the end. Just because one bad apple. Don't do this, Emily. As I am now, even if I don't have this ring, I... Yet before I could throw it, someone grabbed my arm. I'm glad it's you. Miss Whiteley, what are you planning to do with that? Holmes, 
I... He was staring fiercely into my eyes. I was near convinced that he was able to read my thoughts. Now isn't the time for you to throw that away. It is because of your ring that we were able to meet you. It was because of your ring that we were able to help one another. You said as much, didn't you? You have helped your loved ones and become a guiding light for those who need it. It matters not if someone else with the same thing you have chose to betray its trust and all it symbolized. That Her Majesty saw goodwill in you and wishes you would use it to aid those in need still has not changed. Never reject her wishes, earnest as they are, to spread hope through you. Holmes... You've given me hope more times than I can count, you know. Ah. His honesty was stunning, but freeing in the sense that they settled into me and cured me for this moment of my anger. You're right. Forgive me. I wanted to answer to her more than any of us, and now look at me. There's nothing to forgive. You've done nothing wrong. Know that you are a courageous and kind young lady. I know, and I am confident that you will never misuse that ring. Thank you, Holmes. You're very welcome. I watched the river. The light of dusk glittering through the Thames throughout the Thames that evening was bright and ever so heartwarming. What a sweet boy that Holmes is. Guy in the top hat? Eh? Hmm. Here she is in this weekly magazine, too. Someone is a celebrity. Emily Whiteley helps to preserve England's greatest treasures and works of art in full cooperation with the police. Whiteley, I simply perform my duties as one of Her Majesty's detectives. Yes! <laughs> I love this guy. I don't know who you are, but I love you. I simply performed my duties as one of Her Majesty's favorite boot wickers. And the reader swooned in unison. <laughs> well, she is rather a charmer. So charming, in fact, that it irritates me. Like a dog. What's this? What is this? Is that not Holmes's idiot of a son behind her? What is Herlock doing there? Of course. Yes, of course. He's one of her henpecked minions. She may as well be the queen to him. And he does possess that same ring. Could this mean she can be used? Then again, must the answer be based upon the opinion of a dog who chooses so small a cage? Though it is quite sensible, for he may sip his tea, fawn over a girl, and remain ever dominant. If only he would expand his horizons beyond the darkness of London. But alas, what if the water bowl is dry elsewhere? Daddy is much the same. And a waste of space he is. Both of them are. It is nearly time for my age to dawn. And there is no better way to divine my own future than with some hot chocolate. Where's my next cup? Here you are, sir. Hot chocolate, gâteau au chocolat, bonbon au chocolat, and pain viennois au chocolat. Dang, that's a lot of chocolate! Do you know the time? Do you? You're late! See there, the sun is setting! Speed is power, numbskull! Eating so much chocolate so late into the day will wreak havoc upon my health! A fine point, sir. I shall take it away. Did I speak of returns? Did I stutter? <laughs> what idiot thinks of presenting me chocolate and then taking it away? My apologies, sir. Oh, you are a hopeless fool. But know that you are in good company, for you see, no one is more hopeless than Daddy. That Sherlock Holmes treats him like dirt, and still he is obsessed. Oh my god, are you Moriarty Jr.? Wait. I mean, it would make everybody. Everybody's got a junior. Wait. Ev 
<laughs> My mouth won't work. All the famous people in this game have got juniors. I never stopped to even consider Moriarty had a kid. You're obsessed with Herlock. You talk about your dad being obsessed with Sherlock. I... Oh my goodness, are you Moriarty Jr.? I'm so excited. I would never permit myself to be in that same position. Mm. Mm. I'm in heaven. I must bring some of this back to London. The chocolate there doesn't have a patch on this. Good God. I think I've cracked the case, everybody. In no time at all, the day I learnt the truth of my parents' deaths became one more day in a sequence of many. Today was Christmas Eve. The cards I'd wished to gift everyone were in my bag as I skipped along to Harrington Academy. Goodness, is it snowing? It's very green. The very moment I left the carriage, I felt the prickling cold of fresh snow falling against my cheeks. The sky was but a single shade of white from end to end. Of course I'm cold, then. But wherever is the rest of the school? I don't see anyone. Christmas can't be a school holiday. Can it? <laughs> it, it might be, Emily, it might be. And as I moved from start to end, towards the classroom I'd come to love, I noticed not a soul was present on the grounds. It's all a coincidence, I'm sure. It has to be. Marple would never lie to me. Oh no. Christmas Eve is when school is at its most wonderful. I eagerly await your Christmas card, Emily. I remember precisely what she said to me. It's simply impossible for today to be a holiday. <laughs> it's the best time at school because school's closed. I readied myself to open the classroom door, spirits lifted. Good mor- I opened my mouth to greet everyone with manufactured cheer, but it took no time at all for me to notice there wasn't anyone to greet. There's no one here. It... it is a holiday after all, isn't it? Ah, oh, but I might be here before the rest of the class. Before everyone? I suppose all I can do is sit and wait for everyone to arrive. I took my seat. I waited. Flecks of snow continued to fall on the other side of the window, settling along the sill. It created a wistful notion of the time spent at this desk, listening to lessons, engaging with my fellow schoolmates, discovering the world beyond my mansion. It was all fun. I regretted not a single instance of my time spent in Harrington Academy. Come on, don't push me! Keep your voice down! Hmm? I turned upon hearing several voices behind me. What are you guys up to? Oh my goodness, I can't wait to see this picture. Merry, Merry Christmas! Christmas! Oh my! In that instance, the room was packed with multicolored confetti and the pop of party crackers. Should be Happy Christmas more than Merry Christmas, but that's fine. Nah! Huh? What? What just happened? Ah, uh, look at everybody. <laughs> Jack's kind of slightly participating. Ah, <laughs> oh, this is so good. I love it. All of my friends were here with Christmas crackers in hand. Hi there. Did we surprise you, Emily? <laughs> we happen to be the only ones at school today. I can't believe you're really here. You are a special sort of woman. Wait, what is all this? You can't mean... We're sorry, but, but it was Miss Marble's idea to surprise you. It's, it's actually not a school day. Pawn me word. You do have a habit of putting in the effort when it's nonsense like this. Might want to consider a proper hobby. How dare you imply such a thing? My word. You ought to learn to quill that lip when a good deed is done. But he's right! We're all in school on a day off because we want to celebrate with her! You mustn't be angry with me, Emily. It was all in good fun to surprise you. And we still aren't done. 
Hudson will soon be here with all kinds of food for us to enjoy. I can't wait for the face you'll make when you see them. All this? For me? Oh, thank you all so much! This could have started as a sympathetic act for a girl with no family. Yet I smiled, for each of their cheeks were flushed with pleasure from having done this. Indeed, there was no greater gift. The hymn of carolers could be heard to the melody of church bells. The snow continued to fall in heavier clumps, turning the building and streets into a stunning perfect white. This was a true day of joy. Christmases had come and gone, some delightful, others quite sad. And now that I had this one, the loneliness was behind me. After all, it was my very first Christmas in London. Aw, becoming a fine lady. Christmas memories. We all celebrated Christmas together. I'll never forget this day for as long as I live. The door to a new story. The eve of London's new age has been opened in the extra section. Oh my. Everyone's so pretty. It's really weird seeing everyone wear white. <laughs> Especially Pendleton. <laughs> Aw, that was so much fun! What a grand end. Ooh, new ending video! How exciting! Oh, the music in this game is so good. What you're gonna show me in this ending? Okay, so it's like a new song and going through memories and stuff. Cute. That was too short. I wanted more. <laughs> I mean, technically, we have the epilogue to look forward to, but I wanted more. Oh. It just felt like so much build up to that, and then we got like a bunch of stuff, but then it just ended so quickly. I wasn't prepared. Yeah, I just realized like Morin wasn't involved in that at all. Considering Morin played such a huge part in all the other um, other chapters, except for Akachi, it's really interesting. I love all the CGs from Holmes's route. I'm a bit squinty-eyed right now. I want to see if the I think everything's been from home so far. It changes for each boy! Stop! Yay, we get all the boy stuff. Good, good, good. That was so cute when they got married in the woods. Ah, oh, man, the memories are coming back. My heart. There's our jack -a boy Have we already moved over to Jack? We have. That's so funny. I think Holmes said like the most picture <laughs> in the credits. And I was like, Watson, you get two. Jack, you get two. Is it Lupin's turn now? Yep. Lupin, you maybe get two as well. Yeah, there we go. And then Akchi also gets two, probably. Let's see, yeah. There's our two boys. Our two boys from the east. Man, that was a good route too. Oh, this game was so good. I know I'm not done with it yet, but I just gotta say, this game is so good. The art was so pretty. Music was so good. Stories were so good, but it's too short. This grand ending was too short. 
I was like ready to buckle down for a 10 hour experience. <laughs> okay, maybe not 10 hours, but <laughs> longer than that. Oh, I'm glad uh, Kobayashi and Marple also had pictures in this credits. That's good. Pretty, pretty. Okay, so they're gonna show stuff from here too. I'm waiting to see if there's gonna be like any secrets for the last thing. Our duo route. Cute. Yay! Happy Christmas! Emily's a lucky lady. She's got a lot of good good buds around her. And so many eligible loves. Thanks for playing. Yay. And we're back. All right, let's look at that. Uh, first, rewards. My precious memories of spending Christmas with everyone. There's a note. I can't read what the note says. Drat. Drat. Well, we got everything. Everything is full in here. And epilogues. Grand after. Oh boy, that's like clipping. The Eve of London's New Age. Sounds kind of intriguing. Well, we'll definitely go and check that out next. Thank you guys very much for joining me for the grand end. I hope you all enjoyed it. We got at least the murder of our parents solved, I guess. But the mystery that is Pendleton shall last forever, unless we get to see what that's all about in the epilogue. I don't know. I I guess I, did, I technically didn't get um, confirmation on whether that was Moriarty Jr., but I feel it in my soul. I feel it. He might show up in the epilogue. I hope he does. I really like him. <laughs> and I've been promised that Mycroft will finally show up. I've been waiting since the beginning of this game for freaking Mycroft. Gosh darn, I'm gonna get it. So hopefully I'll see you guys there for the epilogue. Thanks again for joining me. And until next time, I will see you later.